So next up here, out of a storage unit, this is like something you only see on TV, a childhood Pokemon card binder. Welcome home, Rep Pack. Mark is here. <laughs> Welcome to Comfort Cartoons, the show where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, all the way to the modern day. And I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob and Nickelodeon collection. <laughs> but not just that. The creator and founder of the show was an assistant coach to Airbud. But I hope you beautiful people are having an amazing day. And if you guys aren't, you know the drill. Y2K. Camera flip. It's about to get a whole lot brighter rep pack because your boy is here and today is going to be an awesome day because we are going to be covering a huge variety of different Y2K 2000 stuff. If you guys didn't see it already, we did our first episode of this series and that is our storage hauls. So back here, I have a full box of different stuff from storage lockers that I paid 200 bucks for. So that's what we're trying to beat today. Yeah. <laughs> Two Benjis. Two Franklins. Not the turtle, Ryan. Get him out of here. Two Franklins to get that whole box back there but shout out to my friend Andreas and his wife as well I ended up meeting them actually doing my flea market hunts that I do with my mom if you guys haven't seen them already go check those out we got to do another one soon but I met him doing that and he actually goes to these storage units and they end up buying stuff I mean basically what you see on storage wars sometimes they get them for like 80 bucks and they get a whole locker of stuff but granted they have to clean it out and stuff like that as well too but they get a huge value on it because then they're able to go to the flea market and sell a lot of the stuff off and a majority of their clientele comes and picks up like furniture, jewelry, houseware, and stuff like that. And the stuff that your boy, you know, your boy, SpongeBob 2000s uh, Nickelodeon Disney Cartoon Network merch, that stuff ends up being a little bit harder for them to move, surprisingly, at, against the clientele they have. So I've worked out a deal with them where I just pick up all the stuff that they find in that regard for a lump sum. They send me pictures of some of the stuff and I try to keep it a mystery to myself, but at the same time to make sure we're getting at least a good value overall and don't end up with a bunch of stuff that's not really, you know, what we collect here on the show or or something that I'm gonna put on my shop or the whatnot streams. So I've been working with them on this second box here. So me and Mitchell just loaded it up and I tried, I told Mitchell, close your eyes, close your eyes loading it up. But we loaded up our best without looking into it. I'm not gonna lie, there was some stuff where I was like, Ooh, oh. So then any further ado, let's head back to the cavern and see if we uh, at least got $200. And also, what surprises are in here? It's like a little treasure hunt. We have a little treasure chest back here. We just picked up. Now we're going to go through it. Let's do it together. You want me to give him a little have a little snow on the I think we, we should. I'm thinking I give him a little ring a ring a little booty booty booty. Stop it, have it, have it, ring a little booty. Oh, hey, 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 close it down now there, friend. It's been blurred out a little bit so you guys can't see all of it. But there's a lot going on in here. Let's just go ahead and get into it one item at a time. Okay, so we're gonna get started here. We're gonna grab, like I said, one item at a time. And one item that got my attention immediately Ooh. was this. The video now. Oh, dang, you got a translucent one? That's I sick. know, dude, the green is sweet, too. This is like a perfect cavern edition. We have one in here already. This is the Video Now Color FX. I don't really know what the FX is different from the Video Now Color. It's got special effects. <laughs> <laughs> so we already have this one. This is just a regular color, though. That one has special effects. Apparently. So <laughs> this is the SpongeBob edition of it right here. It's an okay one. It's got the uh, SpongeBob movie uh, preview disc in there. And we also have this one. I don't want to say it yet because we have another video coming up, but I may have this one sealed, maybe. But this one right here is the FX edition. So let's throw some new batteries in here and see if it actually works. Ooh. All right, it's going there. Come on, it's, ta it's taking a while. I mean, I remember the color version does take a little bit of time too, but this is ta taking a minute. Come on, we'll give it some credit. It's been off for a while. Revving it up. Oh, dude, this one has a backlight. Did the other one have a backlight? Because maybe that's new. Oh, that's what you were saying. Yeah, it had like some color or something, some light color. Oh, maybe it's the lighting effect. Yeah, maybe it is the light in the background. Come on. Hey, yeah! There we go! So it is working. It takes a little while to boot up, but I'm also not familiar with the FX one, so maybe this one just takes a little bit longer to get geared up here, though. Do you know evil? I think that's the episode where Jenny gets new eyes. So that's the thing that happens. Yeah, you know, she's a robot. Life is a teenage robot, not life of a regular teenager. Well, actually, you get glasses, too, so you got new eyes. A robot. Hey, there hey. it goes! So it is playing. I have this one. You can see the lighting difference though, actually. Oh, yeah. Like that one's got a little bit brighter of a backlight. Now the disc is not probably the best, but so we can get through there. There we go. 
So you can see the lighting difference. I guess there is a little bit difference in that regard. So it does work though. I don't know what these go for, but that's pretty sweet. <laughs> so we got basically an SP and then like the SP advanced with like the light. Basically it's the SP001 versus the 101. Slightly more deviance of light. <laughs> <laughs> so that one was broken and it sold for 20, but it came with discs. So I'm saying at the minimum 20, 20 fair you think? I mean, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, it works still, so. Yeah, I mean, and audio still works on it too. So let's just go with $20, maybe on the high end, but $20 for this guy right here. So that's $20 off of our 200s. So let's keep it moving. So next up, we have two drink containers here, and these Ooh. are smaller ones. They're pretty much identical. There is a Teletubbies one and also a Barney one, which I don't even know what are they doing with that. I thought they were giving the pig a bath. So it was like a Barney with like some farm animals. Barney, and then also I think, what is her name? Bop? Baby Bop, and she's got um, two sheeps with her. I mean, they look pretty clean for, oh, dude. This is the original Stanley Cup. Oh my God. Look at that, Baby's had it made. And maybe that's why people love the Stanley Cup so much, because it's like. <laughs> I could be a big baby now. <laughs> it's like a big baby sippy cup. So <laughs> let's open it up here. It's brand new. It still has the thing in there, what the heck? It has the extra straws in there and the instructions wow. too. So it's brand new. Is this one new too? I only guess they were new because this was zip tied. It's like, uh, either they're really organized or they're new and the same thing right there that one is wow. brand new as well so dude that is like babies are so lucky like i'm always you know flopping around the sodas dripping out of the can they have this little look nothing can spill oh still nothing can spill but you want to drink something boom Rah. they have a straw because it's double layered literally there's the only place that the liquid can come out is the straw and you can only get to the straw from the full cycle of that thing i don't know the value on these but they're new old stock from 1990 98. <laughs> I, I could have probably had one of those as a kid. <laughs> yeah, literally. Were you a Barney kid or Teletubbies? Barney. Barney for me as well. I mean, I watched both of them, but I told you guys before on the on the show that the son, who's like now older than uh, as old or not older than us from Teletubbies, like gave me trauma. Like I was so afraid of that son. Teletubbies. <laughs> I couldn't look at the sun ever again. Or, not that you should, but I didn't even want to dare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I preferred Barney because it was less scary to me, which now knowing more about Barney behind the scenes should probably be a little bit more scary to me. You don't, you don't hear anything crazy about those kid, those people in the Teletubbies costumes. I mean, we're going to look up the value, but I'm thinking at least $10 each on these because they're new old stock from 1998. Yeah. And they have like everything with them. Literally. All right. So we looked them up. There is some that go really high, some that go really in the middle, but all of them, even the used ones, are about $10 each. So we're gonna go bare minimum. I think it probably could do better than that, but I think bare minimum, we're gonna go $10 each. So making them another duo of $20 there, being brand new. So now we're at 40 bucks out of our 200. Let's keep it moving. Okay, we have a bunch of plush in here, so let's Ooh. get all the plush out. We'll do it all at once. Ooh, Mitchell! <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have this guy right here. Try not this to look. One. Okay, let's see here. All right, I think that's most of the plush, except for one big guy that I'm liking the way he looks. Not really, he's kind of dirty. <laughs> <laughs> we have this big giant SpongeBob who is filthy. I will say that he was in a storage unit, so he is really dirty, but none of this dirt looks unwashable. So after washing him up, I think he should be good. But my only thing is, is that I've never seen this plushie before. We have his toes there. We, do, we can confirm that SpongeBob does have four toes. We counted them, except for in this shot right here where he has five toes and we're gonna, we're gonna hope we never have to look at that again okay but he has these hawaiian board shorts on not his typical red uh swim trunks and i see this little piece of string here maybe so, something was attached yeah and there's another one over here so i don't know if maybe they're just missing strings or if he had something maybe like a surfboard that he was like holding on his back or i have no clue so he could be missing something so i don't necessarily know what his value is <laughs> if he's not missing anything i'm gonna keep him in the collection just for my own collection but if he is missing missing something, then maybe we'll probably try to look for a better one down the line. You know what it might be? Looking at his other hand, the way his fingers are, I think he might have a ukulele. A ukulele? Or like a guitar or something. Yeah, we'll look into him. Let's just do all the plushies and then we'll look in all of them at the end here. So next up we have Mr. Potato Head here. <laughs> and this is from Disneyland. And I, oh, he's got bendable, posable arms too? Kind of. Kind of. They either go up or down. That's pretty much it. Well, he's like a part of a quartet. I think if I'm right, this might be from Pixar Pier. Have you seen my ear? Who's in my ear? 
I wouldn't be surprised being that it says Disneyland, it came from that. So we have that right there. Pl these are so freaking cute. We have Plussel and Minin. I'm glad you got both. <laughs> I know, like when we were going, adding it all in there, I was like, oh, please let me find Minin in this stuff. So we have Plussel and Minin right here. I found Plussel first there, but then Minin came second. Their tails are so cute. These are your, uh, every generation of Pokemon has their own Pikachu clones. We have the third generation Pikachu copies, Plussel and Minin, but these are perfect because in third generation of Pokemon being Ruby and Sapphire, they actually released what is called double battles. And that rocked my world when I was a kid. So Plusle and Minin were perfect because they had helping hand and they were just a good duo to battle against. Or to still be used in double battle. I think even in the recent Scarlet and Violet DLC, a character has Plusle and Minin. So along with that, we also have Torchic, Ooh. the second best starter from third generation. So these are all- Behind Trico. The, yeah, Trico is definitely number one. They have the old school like card here. So I'm gonna guess these are probably from that era, 2007. 2007, so we would have been 12. Does that sound like third gen for you? I feel like two, four, third gen's like four, 2004. Like a little later, a little past third generation when these came out. But still like representative of it. Still pretty old. And then we have a Jigglypuff who is very dirty. <laughs> very dirty puff. I almost look like a Cocoa Puff very soon here. So this one is not that old though, I can tell. This is from Toy Factory 2022. So some so newer stuff say, in here. Can, you can see it's more of our KD. Yeah, so this is AR arcade plush, exactly. Something you would've got from a claw machine or something like that. Jigglypuff, definitely needs a bath. We have, I have, there's something over here I can't wait to see, but we'll grab this next. This is really cute too. This is Pooh Backpack. So you put the bag straps on and it's like Pooh is giving your back a hug. <laughs> that is so sweet. And then he has his own backpack on that is then your backpack to put your stuff in. That's a weird inception. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make sure the inside is clean here. Uh, pretty clean, there's some like fuzz in here, but I think that's just string from the inside. So the inside is pretty clean. You might have some random kid junk, which is just like pieces of the pencil tips. <laughs> <laughs> or like a Crayola like paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, staples, uh, that general kid backpack dirt. Yeah, so he's definitely gonna have to get clean before anything anyway, but he's got a nice solid hard nose and eyeballs there. I think that's pretty cute because this is really in style right now to the plush backpacks and this one is like this one could work so well in an outfit as well too he's just adorable and then dude jojo circus this is only our Ooh. second jojo item we have ever found before so this is jojo from jojo circus is a disney channel a playhouse disney show for the two people that remember jojo a uh, shout out to you guys jojo's dabbing you up yeah dab him up jojo yeah yeah <laughs> name so nice you gotta say it twice <laughs> so jojo i don't know oh wait and it has the authentic disney store a patch in the Ooh. bottom. So I mean, I don't know. I could be her, see her being alone, maybe like 10 bucks. But I think that's all the plushie for right now. No, wait, actually, the Charmander. Another Charmander. We see this Charmander so much. Oh, crunchy boy. Okay. It's not the crunchy Charmander, thankfully. Oh, this good. is a, another one of the Toy Factory ones. This one's got the tag on him. But this, we found this one at a thrift store before without the tag. So that's and, where he came from. Yeah, we found him like at least three times. He's a very common Charmander to spot. But um, yeah, we got another Charmander in here too. And, and I I think we've already, cause I had two of them. I think we already sold one of them for like $9. So that's $9 right there immediately. Immediately. What, what did you say? Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two fire starters here. I think that's all the plush now for sure. Oh my gosh, dude. And there is one thing in here that I had to make sure I put it in there separate. I think you may have seen it, Mitchell. Do you remember the Mihao Kai Lan? Yeah, that weird thing that I thought it was creepy. It is demented. There was a particular item item in here that he said he found in a plastic bag. Like, he sealed in a plastic bag in the back of the storage unit, and it's a Mihao Kai Lan item. He sent me the picture, and I was like, oh yeah, I want that, for sure. And you guys will see it in a little bit here. Maybe we'll grab that neck after we check out the plushies. It is suspicious. I don't know how this toy ended up like this. I have no clue, but I am very curious if you guys have any information about how it could have happened, or maybe they released it like that. Maybe it's some kind of prototype, I don't know. But let's check out these plushies here. First off, I I gotta find out about the SpongeBob man. I'm not gonna lie, as we went through all of these, I was still thinking about him. Okay, so we got a lot of value here in the plush. The biggest guy here was this Pooh, and I knew the Pooh was so adorable that he had to be at least more than 10, 15. It was for 25 for the little Winnie the Pooh backpack. And the 
Pokemon plush surprise. Sometimes a Pokemon plush, you can get one that's like a hundred bucks. But sometimes a lot of them are a little bit lesser in price. Plus one mine and as a duo go for about 20. So that's right now, what, 45? He goes for about 10, but we're gonna go in the minimum after shipping costs and all that stuff. And we're gonna do five. And we're going low numbers on here because you know, we wanna get that margin. We wanna know what's the bottom level we can expect. So this is another, he goes for about eight to $10, but we're gonna go with five because shipping costs and all that stuff. So about five each, so we're going 10 on that. So we have 40, 25, 20, 10, that is 55. Five. And this guy, he is not worth much. <laughs> I don't know why he's so cool, but nonetheless, he's not worth that much. So we're gonna just, in case we went high on anything, we're gonna add him as a freebie. And for JoJo here, she goes for about $15, but after shipping costs and all that, about $10. So add that to it as well. So what does that bring us to? So we're now at $110. $110, just from the plush? We didn't even check SpongeBob's price. Oh yeah, SpongeBob is on screen here, but that's, he has a surfboard. He comes with a surfboard. Ah, I wish he had the surfboard. Surfboard. If he, I'm not gonna keep him because he's just incomplete. I, I'll probably just put him to the side and hopefully I'll get that surfboard one down the line. But he goes for about 15 with the surfboard. So without the surfboard, maybe five dollars. We'll just do five dollars on him. So what does that bring us to? 115. 115 dollars. Okay, I'm getting a little less worried about that 200 dollar price tag. Should I grab out the Mihao Kailin? I feel like we kind of have to. I've <laughs> talking about it. All right, let's put these guys to the side here and prepare your eyeballs. Prepare. They cleaned it up a little bit for me, but what is wrong with her? What? <laughs> that is oh, terrifying. Oh my god. On this channel, we are discovering so many strange things. And they said when they turned it on, the batteries are still good, and it was just like going off and on randomly. So I, they had to turn it off. I hate that. That is strange. We have, we found some creepy stuff over here. We have Little Bear, which is pretty creepy himself. We found the Possessed Elmo, and now we have this creepy Mihao Kai Lan. And I don't know why, but she has no eyeballs. Her uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, it, it looks very off putting. <laughs> I don't know why and how, and like if it's a prototype or if there was just some kind of mistake in the design on this one. We don't know. But nonetheless, I got it. I was like, I want it. I don't know what's wrong with it, but I want it. I'm like, what we'll do is we can put it in the background during Halloween. Because we do the decorating for Halloween. We are going to go ahead and put her into the background during the Halloween time. Let's see if we can actually get her to turn on, though, here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Kyle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she just moved her arms. How long? Forever. <laughs> oh my goodness. How do you feel today? Oh my oh. gosh. Her head tilts. I don't like this. It's the fact that her arms keep moving after as well. So there is the Mihao Kai Lan. You can go ahead and hit the lights back on. Let's just check this out from a comp. <laughs> no. Please, no. <laughs> So you guys let me know about Halloween Nihao Kai Land if you guys like that idea. She's kind of, I'm like, her clothes are non-removable, so I don't even think I can wash them, but I think her just being damaged as it is, I love the obscurity of it. I want to add to the collection. You know, SpongeBob without the surfboard, that's just kind of weird. It's just kind of broken. But this is like broken in such a way that it makes me kind of in love with it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to go ahead and just, just do no value for Nihao uh, on screen here. Zero dollars, but... Cool, we're just gonna put you over here. All right, so <laughs> on, that no on that note, let's just go ahead and move on. All right, oh dude, come on. Wait, what the heck? Spy Kids game over, including 3D version and 2D version, plus four 3D glasses. This is the tallest DVD case ever. <laughs> I think this is the ones they had at Costco. You know, the little handle on them? Oh, yeah. I don't know why those ones at Costco. Ryan will put it on screen. I don't know why Costco, Sam's Club DVDs, they have these little handles. Even the games have these little handles on them. No clue, but nonetheless, they existed. So I think this is probably one of those. But man, it's a sealed copy. A sealed copy of Spy Kids. That's sick. With the 3D glasses. That's a nostalgic piece in itself. But what year did this come out? 2000? What, like two? I don't even remember. Dude. I remember seeing this movie in the theater of my school. Brian will put the date for Spy Kids 3D on screen. Spy Kids 3D was by far the best Spy Kids in my opinion. But four pairs of 3D glasses. We actually have the 3D glasses behind the chair right now from this movie, but it's not these ones. So I don't know what the value on 
this one is, but nonetheless, it is an awesome piece here. Oh man, when I was a kid, dude, look at Junie. He's got this little stupid plastic like uh, armor. Yeah, this armor is probably like fifty dollars of like armor, like like football gear. But that, when you're a kid, dude, imagination takes over the rest. He was basically Tony Stark. Yeah, he's got even like the reactor in his stomach or his yeah. chest. <laughs> like when you're an adult now, you're like, this costume is so cheap. Like you know, for a movie setup. But like, and you're a kid, man. This is like, dude, this is uh, Overwatch. Like this is a uh, Titanfall gear here. This is amazing. Kind of like, uh, Power Ranger armor. Yeah, this is incredible. <laughs> That's on screen. So that's that's kind of surprising. Well, I mean, wow, that's that's almost retail. Almost. I mean, if you would have invested in Spy Kids 3D copies, you would have lost two dollars by now. <laughs> <laughs> you would have bought like a hundred of them, thinking, "Oh, these are gonna go up." You would have been wrong. <laughs> They're about fifteen dollars new. But that one didn't have this little, little little chamber down here. This is like a steel bookcase uh, version of it right here. This is a, a solid one. I think this one is a little more. So that one was fifteen dollars free shipping. I'm gonna give it fifteen dollars flat because without the shipping, it'd probably be ten. But because this one's boxed, I want to get it fifteen flat. So this is like. The collectors, collectors, the collector series. Three collectors in that. <laughs> <laughs> were you a Spike Kids kind of kid, or were you more of a Shark Boy Lava Girl? Oh, I was both, man. I had options. <laughs> I, I love. I think I like Shark Boy and Lava Girl more, but I watched all of them. <laughs> okay, we have some more media here, so let's just grab the media out. Oh yes, we have a lot of media coming out of here. Oh, dude, there are so many dittles. Actually, some of these came out of one of them, I think. So first off here, oh my gosh, man. Did you watch this? This is The Adventures of Timmy Tooth, Timmy the Tooth. No one knows more about imagination and adventure than Timmy the Tooth. What? This I've is a never seen this. You've never seen Timmy the Tooth? No, I've not. He was basically the Barney of the oral game. <laughs> okay, he, he was a Timmy and he's a tooth and he's a, in a costume. It's I don't for, know. It's for kids two to seven. I might have missed that. <laughs> I, I can't remember a lot about the show, if I'm being honest. I think his pet was a toothbrush. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in hindsight, would you think- His best friend is Floss. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But you would think of the hierarchy of tooth stuff, that like a toothbrush would be the king, and then the, the, the teeth would then be the pets. You know? And the yeah, because it's like, oh, without the toothbrush, you're nothing. You're dirty. <laughs> yeah, the, tooth, the toothpaste would be like his wife. Like, the hierarchy <laughs> doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know why the toothbrush is the pet. But the tooth is the main man himself. He looks like a good old, he looks like a, like a good old molar. But this is a sealed copy of Timmy the Tooth. When it comes to kid VHSs, there's usually a big margin there, a big space in the middle that's like non existent. They're either really cheap or they're really expensive and not a lot in the middle. So we'll find out about Timmy the Tooth here. So the next one I saw that was a good one here, and I was so hyped when we grabbed it is this right here. This is a complete series, Ooh. one of the SpongeBob series. This is the green label, complete first season with all the special features. And I have this in the collection already. Let me grab it. We have one sealed for the green label shelf. And then this is my watch copy. Being honest, most of the time I watch this through the, the best 100 episodes disc, but there are some special features on this one. You only get inside this one. And you get that letter from Steven Hillenburg, which is just incredible. And if I could have some way to go back in time and get one item signed, by Steven Hillenburg, I'll always say it would be this right here. I would love to get this letter that he puts in the DVD for the first series, season one. He signed it here, but I would love to have him sign it for real right here. Yeah, like an actual like a marker. Yeah, and I'd ask him, can you get it as close as you did to that signature there? That'd be so it's sick. like a little replica right there. That would have been amazing, but you know, obviously that's not an option anymore. RIP, the GOAT, the King, Steven Hillenburg. But that would be like my dream option, like a dream item. So this one right here, you can see it's kind of sun faded though. Very, very beat up. Up here this is a way cleaner box set but let's go ahead and check out the disc on this one here let's start with disc one usually if disc one's good the rest of them are good too has the note in there as well we're gonna flip that the right way and then disc one let's take a look oh man if this was a restaurant that'd be a FDA AA plus not that the FDA really does a good job on that I mean I think most things can get an A <laughs> but they're that a, right there. They're above that. They're an S plus. <laughs> an S plus, exactly. So that box set is a way better set than I have. I don't know. I think, I don't know. For right now, maybe I'll keep both of them. But I don't know. I probably could find this one again. I don't know. I'll see what I'll end up doing with it. But nonetheless, this is going to be my go-to copy being at the disc are in way better shape. And the, there's no uh, sun bleaching or anything like that. I don't even really know how this one got sun bleached. This is a secondhand copy to me. But it came in that condition. So now I have a better one. Next up here we have is the 
Power Rangers. I just said yes to this one because I, I was like, well, I don't really watch it, but maybe somebody else likes it. And a lot of you guys have been talking about asking me to do more Power Rangers stuff here and there. I didn't grow up with a lot of Power Rangers, to be honest. It wasn't a show that I watched a lot. I did have a couple, like Dino Fury, a couple different series that I, I watched a little bit here and there, but I didn't watch a lot of it because for me when I was a kid, if it was real life, like if it was real life until I was like a teenager, I didn't watch it. It was just only animated stuff. So we have Power Rangers Christmas there, uh, Alpha's Magical Christmas. We have Zatch Bell, which I did watch. Zatch Bell on DVD here, a random episode arc of episode 41 to 44. <laughs> but you know, hey, you gotta watch them somehow, right? We have a sealed copy of Ben 10 and Friends. <laughs> it's like Ben 10 and Friends, but these are all Ben 10 episodes on here. It made it seem like on the back was gonna be like a bunch of other like action themed Cartoon Network shows, but it's all Ben 10. <laughs> Who's his friends though? It's like it's just his aliens themselves? I guess. I mean, the, the, there's Ben 10,000, the episode Ben 10,000 on this one. Ooh. Though. So the next up here, we have a previewed uh, Blockbuster edition of this. I, I used to be a big advocator of the Blockbuster copies because the box was sturdier, but I also realized down the line that means what? Wait, what? You were saying? <laughs> I was gonna say, usually the Blockbuster version doesn't come with the insert. That one's gone through like the rain or something. But... <laughs> it's because the inserts don't fit in there, so it's probably been crushed in there over all this time. Typically, they don't have the inserts in the Blockbuster one, but this is a very wrinkled Blockbuster insert. And this is Timmy's Top Wishes. I don't know how you they figured out how to like, you know, I guess that's maybe the episode title. No, it's not. It's just uh, Butch Hartman. Oh, so oh, that's sick. This is Butch Hartman's Picks. Of what he thinks is the best, like, wishes he's made? Yeah, so, the creator of The Fairly Odd Parents, Butch Hartman, this was his top pick, like, episodes, I assume, or wishes, right here in one disc. That is really cool. I love how you have Trixie down there, like, starstruck by Timmy. And again, guys, sorry for the revving in the background. My, my, my neighbor is going crazy on whatever he's doing. And they also have Chester right there, too. Cosmo, Wanda, really cool cover there. Oh, man, cool Timmy. Yeah, we have a plushie of Cool Timmy right up behind this little post here. You can see him. Peeking around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh, and this, dude. Ooh. This is a sealed copy of the Jimmy Neutron movie. And they were two for 15. <laughs> when they were two. Damn, that's actually kind of a lot. <laughs> two for 15. But this is probably when DVDs are more relevant, you know? So two for 15. Sealed copy, though. I don't think this is the original copy because this has Paramount Collection there. So I think this might have been like a re-release of it. But nonetheless, that's still cool to have a sealed copy of the Jimmy Neutron movie. Because nowadays when you get this, it usually comes in like a pack that like comes with five other movies or it comes at least with another movie like in a two pack, but this is a standalone Jimmy Neutron disc here. I was gonna say, isn't the original like a yellow cover? Ah, uh, well the VHS is. I don't know if the DVD original is a yellow cover. We'll have to see, actually, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think that the original VHS, even DVD is yellow too. So this would be a re-release, but it's still sealed. So uh, pretty cool nonetheless. And then this right here, man. Ooh. The SpongeBob movie. That's but a different cover. Yeah, we're not used to seeing this cover. This is the cover right here we have. And in our shelf here, we have our ongoing stack of uh, continuing to grow. SpongeBob movie copies. This is a cover that they use for a, maybe for about two or three years, and they also use it on the Blu-ray copy of the SpongeBob movie. So this is a more modern disc of the SpongeBob movie. So we don't have this box, at least in the collection. Do not have this disc either because we have the one that's actually like the logo. It looks like a uh, preserver, whatever that they're called. Yeah, life preserver saver thing tube, inner tube. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> it has that. But this is a, you know, the, cl the classic Nickelodeon's new style. Yeah, gray and pointless and, and sad. But the box is pretty cool, so I was glad to add this one to the collection here. I wanna see what's different on the box besides that, to be honest. So our version of the box here, so the back actually kind of does a better display of like what the movie has to offer, to be honest. So here's the back of the other one, the original one there. So this is 2014. And this is the 2004, 2005, I would assume. Yeah. So this is 10 years years later they re-released the movie and that's wow. kind of what the front looks like there. Oh, so they just took this and put it on the back. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. They, they just, just took the monsters, the image. yeah. But the, I, I prefer the original way more. Yeah, this is just more, I don't know, it just looks more like a movie. <laughs> yeah, I think this one just, it gives you that curb appeal of like, oh, that's Spongebob, let's see what it is. Yeah. And then the back of this one, I actually want to say I, nah, nostalgia tells me this one because you don't get the, do you still get the quote from uh, A.O. Scott? This country needs Spongebob. Oh, yeah. You can't, even 
even 10 years yet later, they're like, hey, nobody said it better than A.O. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Since all those 10 years, still no one said it better. And then you have Plank. I kind of like the artwork better on this one, if I'm being 100% honest with myself, but the nostalgia of it won't let me pick anything but this one. I gotta say, I mean, I do prefer the way they did the back on this one a little more, but the yeah. artwork would be cool if it was the background. Yeah, I'm trying to see special features. They're about the same. Sorry, guys, we're spending too much time on this, but this is this is what I do. You know, this is Sponge, this is SpongeBob I'm going to talk a little bit more about. <laughs> so you get more special features. Yeah, you get the game demo on here. I guess they took away some of the stuff that was they considered irrelevant. So if you want the still the better copy is the original one. This one subtracts about two special features being the THQ game demo. Yeah, I guess I guess the game's long gone by then. <laughs> Yeah, and the uh, special undersea featurette case of SpongeBob with voices Steven Hillenburg and uh, Jean Cousteau. So yeah, that's missing from this one as well too. So you're missing about uh, at least two or three special features in this version if you get that one. And I heard uh, from a special somebody in the community told me that they're actually maybe gonna be doing a 4K version of the SpongeBob movie soon. I would be hyped to see that. That would be awesome. I don't I don't even know if I have a 4K TV. I think it might, but I've never watched anything in 4K. So that might be my first movie I watched in 4K. All right, so that's there. And then also we have this, I guess this isn't media, but it's kind of cool. It's a Bakugan battle box. So inside this Bakugan battle box, let's see what we got here. It looks Whoa. like there's a few different things. There's a, a disc here to learn how to play Bakugan, uh, combination battle. This little book here is like, I don't really know, maybe the rules. Okay. And then here's a Bakugan Bakugan pin. The pin is honestly like the sickest thing. Is this Bakugan pin here with like what? There's a little score counter in the pin. You can cheat. That's cool. <laughs> that is so sick with tips as well. That That's is awesome, sick. dude. Literally, you could like if you had this as a kid, you could write your notes, glue them on the inside of that. <laughs> That's kind of dope. Wow, I did not expect that. And then on the inside oh, here, a scorekeeper. Yes, this is the scorekeeper per game and stuff and the like that. Is. That's awesome. So yeah, a little Bakugan setup right there. All right, so we have to look up all this media real quick. Uh, we'll give you a rounded total because so much to go through. Uh, we'll go for there. If anything stands out notably, we'll mention it. Okay, so we have everything on screen for you guys. We checked it all out and we're going in for the lowest numbers we can. For the, the biggest one was a Timmy the Tooth. I couldn't find this exact same one sealed, but I found the cheapest sealed Timmy Tooth that I could find and it was 15. So it could go even more than that, but at the minimum 15 on this guy. This whole stack over here, adding everything up, again, all the comps will be on screen here, on the minimum was about 48. Some of them were a little higher than that, but we just kind of rounded it downward. So about $48 on this side here, bringing our, our total. total 63 just for DVDs. 63 just for the DVDs, VHS, media, that brought us to $193. We are killing it. $193. So you just need a $7 item. Okay, let's see if I can find something $7, okay? <laughs> something $7 or under. We are doing good so far here. And some sick stuff, man. Some really sweet stuff. And that's like, like without like valuing, like, I mean, like her, she could have been like a couple bucks. Never yeah, did. there's a lot of stuff we went really low on. I mean, I think we're well past 200 if we're being 100% honest. And of course, some of this stuff I'm going to be adding to my own personal collection here. Like all of these discs right here. $7 item. Okay. All right, $7 what I'm looking for. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go with this guy. Do you remember this guy? Oh, the Jack in the Box. <laughs> <laughs> the Jack in the Box guy. And your own intern, Mitch. What up, Mitch? For those of you guys who have a Jack in the Box in your area, this is the iconic Jack. If you drove around anywhere in the early 2000s, you for sure saw this guy on somebody's freaking antenna just on their a, car. Just a head and up, yep. yeah. Just their head <laughs> on the antenna of their car. And it took me my whole life to realize I think he's supposed to be an ice cream cone. I hate that. But right. do they even serve ice cream at Jack in the Box? Maybe like when it started, they did, and that's why they made him the mascot. But he's supposed to be an ice cream cone. I don't like that you presented this to me. <laughs> I'll never look at him the same. <laughs> so it's kind of weird, but nonetheless, this guy, it's not a toy. So it's not a toy on the bottom, but assuredly, it has to be like $7. It's, I mean, it's something you got at the at Jack in the Box. I can't imagine it'd be worth too much, but it is also a really cool bobblehead. Yeah, just have that in your car. Or yeah, or in your kitchen, you know? That's just, that's fast. That's a fast food icon right there. I don't even know if Jack in the Box has a mascot anymore. Yep, he's still, it's still Jack. It's still him? Yeah. Wow. Ow. Come on, Marcus. You gotta try out the new double quarter pounder freaking bacon cheeseburger. Okay. okay, the only people that really go to Jack in the Box are people that are in a rush or people that are that are getting post hangover food. Okay. <laughs> this is definitely a more of a, a last option. <laughs> Alright, so he with shipping and all goes for about 15. So he was an easy $10 bill. Easy 10 bucks. And that special friend always. 
You know what's in my heart? It's getting our money back. That's what's in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> we got two dollars, three dollars, three dollars. I almost gave myself, I under, almost undersold myself. Three dollars over our value. So we have made our money back. Although that is, you know, it's gonna take some time. Now everything else we get out of here is essentially in the green. So let's see what else we got here. Okay, so it is getting a little thinner here though. I'm not gonna lie. So I maybe still probably, I probably should have offered like 150, something like that, but we'll, we'll see here. So next up here we have is two My Littlest Ooh. Pet Shops here. And to be honest, I don't know, I have no clue about these things at all, but these are older. They're from 2008. So that's what made me decide to go ahead and add them on into the haul here. So two of them here, let's go ahead and check them out. But maybe we should grab, is there anything else blister related in here? Oh, we have something else action figured about the same uh, age demographic <laughs> what the heck <laughs> Get him out of here. Why did you pick this guy up? <laughs> because he's hilarious. We have like a promiscuous, I don't know if there's an appropriate word I can say for how he's dressed, but we have a, a very interesting uh, Peter Griffin here that I, I know a lot of the Family Guy figures are pretty pricey and they're hard to really find now. This is from 2005. Sorry to look up a skirt for the uh, for the date here, but that's where it was, 2005. As with all humans, you don't know, like right in between there, that's actually the year you were born. <laughs> you just can't see it yourself. <laughs> no, one, no one tells you about it. 2005. So let's check all. You look up this, and I'll look up these. <laughs> so we have $20 for Peter here. There was one with a scarf, but it was almost like after shipping and everything, like 40. So it's missing a scarf with it. I'm thinking just in this date, probably at least 20. And then for the LPS here, in similar condition boxes, minus the stickers, about $15 each. So we're looking at 30 there. Man, I see a lot of these out in the wild with the boxes. And now I regret leaving them every time. I didn't know Little's Pet Shops could be this pricey, to be honest. It is. That sounds like the target prices, yeah. Yeah, $15 is like, yeah, I guess probably like, but I mean, I think probably were like $7 when they came out. So that's a little bit of a come up on those guys. Well, now you know, you gotta look out for them. Oh yeah, their original price here, dude, was $3. Oh, that's a that's a good price then. That's yeah. a good profit margin on 17 if you would've held on to them from 2008. I had no clue that LPS could be like 15 bucks. All right, so there we go. That's $30 right there what does that bring us to 253 253 okay let's keep it going here i'm trying at least you know that'd be nice if he's like almost double at least <laughs> well, i don't know about double now but you know we'll see okay this is a weird one here i have no clue what this i mean i know what it is etch a sketch but it's called the zooper so it's is just because it it's huge or i don't know is it just because of the coloring system here but you can draw like a classic etch a sketch here but it looks like maybe there's more to it i just don't really know besides the design but the design screams 90s. I would be shocked if, if the year is any it's later. It's super size. It looks like it's from 1999. Ooh. So we'll look up this one individually because it doesn't really relate to quite anything else we have in here. I guess there's this too. It's kind of similar. There's this Hello Kitty really scratched up like pencil box. All right, so let's just go with that. And I mean, I don't really expect this one to be anything great, nor do I know what to expect with this one. Okay, so we couldn't find one sold recently because it's kind of an uncomfortable common item but we did look on its past like you can look back as far as three years but it's not as easy to find like an identifiable comp so we have this one that is listed for about 60 but realistically they seem to go for about 35 to 40 dollars let's go with the minimum here in 35 and in case if we're high on this one i don't know but we were low on a lot of other stuff so we'll go with 35 on this one and for this one right here uh I don't really know. I would say we found some that were like for $20 best offer. This one's in really bad shape, so we're just gonna say zero. We're just gonna add it for free in case I went high on this guy. I mean, we might be able to break a 300 though. Okay, we're almost close to 300. Okay, let's see what we got here next. Next up here, we have this Mickey Mouse. Like, Ooh. I was interested in this just because of the actual container itself. It's like a little, uh, almost like a little pocket watch here with the little Mickey ears here. And you open it up and let's see here. There is an actual well, pocket an actual watch. Pocket watch. <laughs> there's an actual pocket watch inside. That's what I was probably guessing was either that or like a wristwatch. But here we go. I mean, it's a little bit worn here, but not bad at all. Open her up. Ooh, Ooh, that is cool. Mickey Mouse. This is one of those things where it could be like $10 or like $100, you know? Yeah, because if it's like a vintage package watch, you know, they go for a lot, usually. Can you believe that at some point somebody, because this chain, you know what this chain's for? Other than pulling it out, no. Yes, yeah, it's, it's for uh, it's for big flex energy. Oh, okay. So, no, actually, yeah, it's, it's for you to pull it out. So at some point in time, you would be like, oh, hey, Marcus, 
couple times and then, oh, one second. I pull this out, wait, let that fall, press this button, tilt it, and then look, and I can tell you the time. <laughs> like, that takes so long. I mean, now I guess you have to grab your phone and press the button, which is still kind of long, but you compare that to a watch. Where it's just like, oh, it's a... <laughs> yeah, like, that's way faster, but I guess it's a little bit more classy. And then also, how else are you supposed to hypnotize kids and their stupid dog? Okay, so obviously that one is like perfect. That one's in way better shape, and it probably is working, which this one, I would assume it probably does work, but you have to be somebody who's into watch works to be able to get into that. I wouldn't even know where to start to open this thing up, but it looks like maybe something to do with this little flat. That's just the release. Yeah, I don't even know, yeah. So this right here is not on because the battery is likely dead. It's a pretty old watch, surprisingly, so I'm gonna go with $20 at the minimum, and you know, might have to spend a little bit more money to get it repaired. So we're gonna go with $20 at the bottom dollar there. All right, next up here, we got this guy, which is a Mickey Ooh. Mouse and Crew piggy bank. And this has the Fab Five on there. So you have all five of them on there. You got Donald, you have Minnie, you have Mickey, Goofy, and also Pluto on the back there. And it even says Fab Five on the back right here too. And they're all loaded up in the taxi, ready to go. The Duck Cab Co. <laughs> you know, to like match the energy of like a New York City cab driver, I think Donald really is the best character. I was say, he looks upset. <laughs> Mickey's got his little camera right there. Where do you think they're going? Florida. I'm thinking Disney World, yep. <laughs> but really cool. But just the status, like the stature of it, that is a really cool figure, you know? And I love piggy banks when they're able to work the piggy bank aspect in it in a way that doesn't really like affect the design that much. So putting the little hole here at the top of the cab sign, it kind of leaves the statue itself kind of unaffected, you know, rather than if they would just put it right here or like, you know, right through Goofy's face. It kind of looks a little bit weird. So I, I, I gotta say, I like this one right here. Just in the design wise, this one's really cool. A little hood ornament that's Mickey right there. Very, very cute. And if you guys had any of these items growing up, let us know in the comments down below. I'm very interested, but let's check out the Fab Five uh, coin bank here and see how that gets us closer to our price. I thought the Fab Five was gonna be at least worth three Fabulous Fives, you know, 25, but <laughs> it's about maybe 15. This is not in perfect shape. It definitely needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but 15 nonetheless. And dude, that is so cool. Like if you had to take on one thing from Disneyland that day as a souvenir, this might've been one of my choices. Yeah, cause it's just, it kind of gives you a lot of characters in one. Yeah, it's all encompassing and it's something you can use and also display. It, it's really sweet. <laughs> Save up for your next Disney trip. <laughs> oh yeah, like it's gonna fit in this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe back then it might have. <laughs> Maybe then. Okay, so we have some more coin banks here. So let's just get all of these guys out of here. Let's just do the Disney stuff. It seems like we have a lot of it here. We have a Ooh. Tinkerbell one here, really cute. Tinkerbell is actually one of my favorite characters in all of the Disney verse. So I love Tinkerbell. And we also have a Tigger one here. He's not in perfect shape. Looks like there's a little scratch on his nose there when I was pulling him out, but they all have their little bottom as well too. Which one are you going with here? I, I think you're gonna pick the Tigger, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go with the, with, with the Tinkerbell one. I mean, hey man, Peter Pan got a sequel. My girl got her own show in multiple movies. You know, I think... Uh, he got his own movie, what do you mean? Oh yeah, he did get his own movie too, that's true. But he didn't get no sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody seen Tigger 2? All right, is that the only coin bank? That's the only Disney thing we have left here. We have one more Disney item here. This. Whoa. Ooh, dude, that is sick. So you know Tomorrowland at Disneyland? Like it's a whole section themed after the future? Yeah, I was looking at the top, just... A it was just astonishing. Yeah, there's a there's a whole section of Disneyland. I don't know, I'm, maybe it's in Disney World, but Disneyland, they have what's called the Land of Tomorrow. Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland, also known as Futurama. <laughs> but in Tomorrowland, they have like an exhibit you can go on that shows you about stuff that they think that might be in the future. There's a lot of rides. Star Tours ride is there as well. Here's the most iconic ride they have at the, in Tomorrowland. When you walk into it, you see these like, you know, spaceships kind of flying around. This is from the grand opening in 1998. Wow. So this is a container you would have gotten at the grand opening of Tomorrowland. Sponsored by Coca-Cola. Yeah, and it's sponsored by Coca-Cola. That's a win to me on its own. So there's our three Disney items. Is there anything else Disney? I also have this, which is this like Mike little thing. I don't even really know. This probably isn't even vintage, but this is from Monsters University. A little like squishable mic here. So we have 
$12 on this guy right here. We have about five on this guy, but I think that's honestly super undervalued, but I think it's really cool too. And you never know too, on our whatnot streams, some of the items we might get more than that, and we also might get less than that. So that's why we go in the lowest end of the worst case scenario. So we have this guy right here for five, and then we also have the Mike here who knew, knew he was selling in some cases like $40, but open, oh, open Mike, about $5. And then Tinkerbell right here, she's about $15 with free shipping, but we all know it costs money to ship something, so about five off of that, it's about $10 as well. So that brings us to what? 355. 355, okay, we just need $45 worth of items here, which I think we might barely get to double. Which, I mean, I'm happy already that we got past 200. But I mean, I think we might barely be able to actually scratch double. Let's check it out here. So next up here, out of a storage unit, this is like something you only see on TV, a childhood Pokemon card binder. This is a what? untouched Pokemon card binder from 2008. That is a wild binder. <laughs> it looks wild, it is like a beat of all hell, but it exists and it is here in front of us. So let's take a look. Ooh, dude, you know what card this is? Oh, uh, this is the Ram, but this is from I think Phantom Forces. I want to say I don't know. We gotta see here. So I've already checked it out. You can see I can usually tell from Pokemon cards if they're fake or not. This one is really worn out, but it's actually surprisingly real. This is from Legendary Treasures. Ooh, yeah. So this card, if it was in PSA 10, brand spanking new, in great condition, you're looking at a thousand dollars. That's Seven, crazy. Seven hundred to a thousand dollars but this is not this is not in that good a condition you can see serious creases already right there yeah and like whitening on the edges whitening on the edges and plus the card is so like used like this kid definitely was playing with it it feels so like sturdy i'm gonna say maybe i mean in in good shape raw it goes for about 100 so i'm thinking this shape maybe like 20 yeah if you're lucky if you're lucky yeah i mean that's the thing condition 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 matters so much and man let's look at the rest of these cards they are so thrashed card is it's really nice card full art ladios right there ex that is sick but the cards condition again there's so much whitening on it but it's not terrible comparatively to that one it's actually a little bit better but they're still creasing like if your card gets creasing that means you know it's been through a lot like if the card gets some whitening some scratching you're like oh okay maybe they just mishandled it but if it starts getting bins in it that's, that's like damn they were going hard i mean honestly this might have to just run as an auction because this is so wild oh base set two little base set two polyrath there again really thrashed but i mean Man, he's, that centering is terrible he's polyrath so he's been through a polyrath himself i mean even though in their conditions though i wouldn't be surprised if this binder we can get at least maybe 44 wow. just because of the cards that are in there oh first edition dark charizard but it's in french <laughs> That is an interesting card for sure. We might have to just check that one out separately, but this is Dark Charizard, first edition from the Team Rocket series, but it's in French, which usually if it's not in English, that means it's worth a lot less, but we'll see. Anything else you spot in here that's like stands out? Oh, Delta, Delta Species. species yeah. Delta Species uh, Espeon there. We might have to look at that one separately too. Uh, nothing else that like stands out immediately. Agron there. Ooh. Electros here. Another Emerald, uh, but a really beat up Pichu there. I mean, other than that, I, I mean. I don't even see dragon cards as often, I don't think. I don't even think dragon's a type anymore, actually. Those yeah. Are pretty cool. They're okay. There's some good ones in here. I mean, they're not terrible. I don't know. Let's check out these two here and see if there's anything notable that comes of them. The thing is about these kind of cards, guys, is that these ones aren't, this one's not terrible condition. The camera probably makes them seem like in better condition than they are, honestly, too. But the thing is, is that like, when it comes to 2008 cards like this, this was during an era where Pokemon was not collected. Like actually, surprisingly, some of the earlier stuff and the modern stuff is worth less than the stuff in this era, like the booster boxes for some of these can go for like $20,000 because this was during an area where people were not collecting Pokemon. At the beginning, you know, a lot of people were collecting it and it's super, you know, Pokemania was going on. People were buying booster boxes, buying cards and collecting them. So a lot of those vintage cards we think of as like grails, unless they're first edition shadow list or first edition in general, most of them aren't worth as much as you might think. But the stuff from the gen three to gen four era, that's when most people were getting out of Pokemon. So therefore they were bought the least and therefore the cards can be worth the most. So simple holographics from that time, being great, it can go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So I wouldn't be surprised if even raw, some of these cards are at least 10 bucks. So let's take a look here. Let's just go with these two and we'll just do a ballpark price. But I'm actually gonna auction this whole binder off and whatever that price goes for will be on screen right 
Hopefully it's good. Now! <laughs> Got a really beat up Articuno that Mitchell found here, but awesome. we were showing this. So this is a non-hollow, first edition French Charizard. $322. Wow. But that one's obviously in way better condition. Like almost minty. And one that's also a lot of whitening. If you look at the condition on this one, it's even got like this brown mark here on the bottom. Yeah. I mean, that one goes for still 60. So, I mean, it really just depends on who you ask and what the price is gonna go for. So, I mean, I would have thought the French one would have been a lot less, to be honest. That just proves though, you keep the condition nice on them, I mean. Condition, condition, condition is everything, literally. So I'm thinking for the whole binder, considering this one, this one, all the other hollows, Let's just do forty dollars for the whole binder. That seem fair, or does that seem high? I don't know. I really don't. I think forty is like. I it's, mean, we'll know when it auctions off how much it goes for. But I think forty at the minimum. Not unreasonable. Isn't an unfair price. I think that it's not in great shape. But some of these cars, if you just want them, it's gonna cost you a lot otherwise. You know? Yeah. So if you just want them, the condition really won't matter as much. So I think forty is a fair price for this binder, and the binder is seeing better days. But I'm. I'm thinking forty dollars. What does that bring us to? That brings us to three ninety-five. All right, let's just go with thirty on the binder then. I could think because I think we'll still be able to get over four hundred. So let's just go with thirty on the binder, even though I think it can go higher. So that's what minus ten. Yeah. Three eighty-five. Three eighty-five. So now we just need one item out of here, which we have five items left to get past fifteen. So that's going with thirty, which I think we can do better than that on that, which we'll find out when you guys will, you guys will already know if I was right or wrong. And but we'll it, find out. And if it did, then it's maybe smash the value of 400 already <laughs> yeah so i mean yeah pokemon cards uh keep them in good shape if you have them you know or don't and we will <laughs> <laughs> just give them to me <laughs> <laughs> or don't and then everybody else's cards will be you know a little bit better so you know your choice <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh you know i had to show you this one when i found it dark ride the dark ride the dark ride freaking box this is a pokemon deck holder that's Sick. That is dope as hell. I don't know what other ones came out. I know that they came out of Burger King and there was a Dialga, a Palkia one, and obviously a Darkrai one, which this is for sure going in my collection. You guys know I have my Ghost Shelf, which is mostly based off of Gengar and Mimikyu, but I have a little section this Darkrai with a bunch of different Darkrai PSA cards. This one right there is going on display up there. That is so freaking sick. Best fourth gen Pokemon, Darkrai. Debate me. Tell me which one's better because you're lying. Okay. Next up, we have Napoleon dynamite why <laughs> why this is a vote for pedro shirt does he work oh he needs batteries but who knows if the batteries he needs are batteries we have but mm. this is a napoleon dynamite talking figure here uh i don't know how much this goes for i will try to go get a, a screwdriver and see if we can open it up and maybe we can replace the batteries but if not then we'll have to just go with that <laughs> eat your food tina Come on, Tini, you fat lard. Eat your food. Oh, man. It's a really cool one there. So we have that one there. We have this Power Rangers figure here, which I think is like a dinosaur. That ain't even Power Rangers, bro. That's Transformers. Oh, Transformers. Don't tell me that isn't similar. A Transformers figure there. Definitely the dino era. We have a VeggieTales cup, which I loved VeggieTales growing up. Uh, during two years of my childhood, I went to a Christian elementary school, and man, did they play a lot of VeggieTales. Yep. And it was one of the only things that gave me refuge <laughs> and entertainment was VeggieTales and Larry Boy. So, you know, I like that, actually. We had, like, all the VHSs in my house. Dang. Do you still have them? All the Christian ones. Nice. No, we donated them to my elementary school. <laughs> no, oh, we Wait a minute, dude, there's actually more items in here. Oh, more? yes. Oh, a dang. Sealed, the SpongeBob big one. But this is That's, a special copy. Yeah, I was like, that looks different. Yes, this is a very, 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 very special copy. So, <laughs> the big one. You may have heard of it. You may have seen it here. I happen to have all of them thanks to our myriad of searches and you guys that rep pack here that have helped me. Sorry, I, I got to flex for us as a community. You know, it took us a while to build this. So, we happen to have all all of them finally collected so we can grab it right here it's not flexing for me i'm flexing for us as a community because i couldn't have done it without you so here we have it the spongebob versus the big one original copy so this came out in 2008 
2009. During 2011, 2012, they re-released some of the bigger SpongeBob DVD sets, the ones that were the most popular. They re-released them and changed the covers. And these replaced ones with the covers are even rarer than the original ones. So this is the big one, which they re-released. We have the big one sealed. Now we have another big one sealed. That's <laughs> so crazy. Like, I wonder what's different about them. It's the exact same disc, same special features, no special features gone or added. The exact same disc just relaunched and they changed the cover. Oh, and they got Stretch Armstrong in there. That's uh, Johnny Cahoon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They got rid of Squidward though, huh? Yeah, Squidward's not on it anymore. That's but, sick. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's just a real Really cool like uh, variant and I actually would love to collect all the variants I think this is our second variant of these covers I think there was like five or six different discs that they re-released these variant covers but this is our first one sealed for sure so that's what I'm talking about we've completed the collection now but now we're looking for these little nuances you know so that right there honestly this whole box was worth it for me to get this one yeah I mean it's I mean would I pay $200 for just this no. probably not <laughs> but that alone to me is like made my day that's awesome man so we'll add this one back in the collection and this one will be going in our vault with our uh, more uh, specialty, you know, archival purpose DVDs. So we have to get all these items figured out here so we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves but I also, so close to the end, I want to check them out here. We have this, the Disney game. Do you remember this? Well, you didn't watch Disney Channel much, huh? I did not. So during 2008, they had what was called, I think they may have had it in 2007 too, maybe a couple years, I don't know. But in 2008, they had the Disney Games. Basically, it was the Olympics. It was the Olympics, but they played it with all of the kids who played on Disney shows. Ooh. So you had like uh, Miley Cyrus or Cole Sprouts like playing basketball or playing uh, Simon Says against uh, Raven Simone, you know, like it was basically all those stars in a game show together. So here's a little binder, and it comes with the cards in there. Oh There's my God! JT Austin here from Wizards of Waverly Place. You have Jason Dolly from, I believe, Corey in the House, and then we have Demi Lovato. Oh my God! After As the Bell Rings, but before everything else. Okay, so there we go. That's our little setup here. I have no clue what these cards are worth, or if they're worth anything, or where you even got these cards. But nonetheless, the nostalgia of the Disney games in itself was worth checking this item out if you guys remember the disney games or watching it let me know okay and then we have one more item let's just get all this out so we can just go through this and get our grand total or you know what let's save the last item let's go through this okay so this one like i said sometimes when it comes to spongebob media there is stuff that is rare but it's not necessarily expensive so there is literally not another one currently as of doing this video that is available of this big one disc like you can't find it right but the last one that sold only sold for 12 dollars so it's just one of those things where it's very rare, but that doesn't mean that the market has started to speak for itself as like, oh, okay, this is valuable on top of that. So we're gonna put $10 for this one. But to me, priceless, like I said, I, I just love this. I would never sell this. This is just going straight into our collection. This is an amazing pickup. So $10 right there on him. This Napoleon Dynamite, he can go up to $20, but that's if he's working. And he has a battery type that we don't have available here. It's a little small, like, you know, watch type batteries. So we're gonna give him $10. I don't doubt, I doubt that he doesn't work. There's no reason to believe he wouldn't work, but we don't know that he does. So $10. The Disney Games, this goes for about $5 and it takes forever to find them because they are pretty rare but if you happen to have the selena gomez card one sold in a psa 7 which is like you could just send in any card and go get a 7 that's like as average as it gets for 750 dollars what i don't think jt austin's probably gonna be that i love him but you know i don't necessarily i mean maybe the dimly lovato card maybe i don't know <laughs> but if you have the selena gomez card you're looking good but for right now five <laughs> the dark rye was another five dollars right there a little bit more a little bit less we got the veggie tales cup again a little more a little less eight dollars and then also the grimlock who goes for about eight dollars a little more a little less so there we go that brings us to well over 400 right 431 400 31 plus we have one more item left which is steven universe Ooh. monopoly the box is pretty beat up but i was like you know what let me take it and we're gonna check and make sure all the pieces are in there but if it has all the pieces and i'm interested all right so after checking here it does have all its pieces i like the organization you know I, I i can give some points to that look at the pieces man the pieces are so cool oh my gosh you got the bus the cookie cat yep looks like yep. one of their feet greg's van yeah his guitar lion that's sick yeah there's some cool pieces in there and the the actual houses instead of the houses i don't want to damage anything or lose anything here but the board itself is pretty sweet wow. there's the whole board 
I have a history of damaging these boards by closing them, so I'm trying to be careful. And then instead of houses, you actually use the crystal gems. Well, that's sick. Yeah. So everything is in there, every single piece. It's almost like never been used. So what does it go for? That's the next question. And the Steven Universe, if you had this sealed, dude, 150 bucks. 150? Steven Universe stuff is just randomly pricey because the fan base is super like diehard. The people that are into it are really into it. So that doesn't surprise me, but it also does at the same time, just because it's Monopoly, you know? But used, we've seen some go for as low as 30 and as high as like 50, 60. So we're gonna go with the minimum, we're gonna go with 25. So $25 at the minimum for the Monopoly. That was an amazing haul, man. That was an incredible haul. I don't know what our total, total value is, but honestly, getting to do these videos with you guys is always priceless. That was so much fun too on top of it. So- The I total is pretty sick. It's four, five, six. Four, five, six, okay, okay. Four, five, six, we have $456 total value. So I, I didn't I didn't overpay. Yeah, I was a little bit worried that I maybe overpaid, but I, we actually got a really, really good value here. I mean, obviously that's gonna take some time to get, you know, all of those prices that we're looking for, but we did go in the minimum of them. So, you know, 200 was a, was a worthy risk. So my, what was your favorite item of the day? My favorite item is Nihau. <laughs> this. Uh, and I gotta say, the Spongebob, the big one, and the new, the whole Spongebob Complete Series Season 1 is incredible. I love that too. Man, it's hard to pick. For my favorites, I'm going with that stuff. I can't pick one. I'm gonna say, that <laughs> I'm too excited to pick one. I'm gonna go with the big one, Nihau Kailan, and Plusle and Minin. And this, I guess these three. Those three are my big three. <laughs> I gotta go with Puzzle and Mining and the video now. Oh yeah, the video now is sweet. And I knew, I had a feeling you were gonna like the translucent color. I mean, those are just sick. They're dope, they're dope. And it's fresh, as it says. So, an amazing haul here. You guys let us know what was your favorite item that we checked out today. Again, you know, this is a variety haul, so if you, you probably at least liked one of the things in here. You know, sometimes we do just SpongeBob, but since you guys like these videos, this is how I've been getting the sourcing a lot of the stuff that I do on my WhatNot streams and on our shop, so this is just kind of a behind the scenes look about how this stuff ends up getting onto whatnot and our like I said our shop so if you guys want to see more of this and see this huge variety of different nostalgic stuff let me know and we'll make sure we do that but I do have another Spongebob exclusive one that's on the works right now as well too so stay tuned for that again if you want to see more let us know in the comments stay tuned we're gonna add a couple items here into the collection but before that you know the drill scan it Okay, so for the DVDs, a lot of these are gonna be going into the sealed copies, especially they're gonna be going into the vault. But this guy right here, you know where this is going. Right down there. <laughs> to the stack. All right, so here's our stack of SpongeBob movies. Oh my goodness. There's another one. This is the first one that's not it fit in. the same as the rest. He's a black sheep for right now. But you know what? He's gonna transform to be the most beautiful of them all. Oh, that's ugly duckling. You don't got a lot of the head. You're just a regular old standout. But we love you. So he's, ow, my elbow. Ooh, oh, ooh, I heard that. It's called karma for talking about him. All right, next one. Okay, so we found out this bottom thing is just a little piece of plastic that's like covering it. A little sticker. Yeah, so mine is already the same exact one. So mine is like literally the box is not perfect, but the discs have like never been watched. They're completely crispy. So I put mine over on whatnot so somebody can hopefully add them to their collection if they're looking for a watch copy. And this one over here, because mine is more just for the display aspect and the archival purposes, we're gonna go ahead and put it right here, which I have the best three seasons of SpongeBob already on archive right there. The box sets for those three watchable and ready to go. And we also have the sealed one right there already for the archival purposes of that one. So that's just again, the watching copy. And for Ni Hao, she'll be going inside of the vault for now until Halloween time comes around. Ni Hao, I'm Thailand. Let's hold hands and play. All right, and Plusle and mine, and they're going here on top of our Phineas and Fur radio. They have another duo up there too, so they kind of blend in. Hey, and if you want to know about the Mad Kid, he's over here right now. <laughs> All right, so over here we have a lot of different Gengar cards. I actually have a whole bunch of Darkrai PSA cards, which I don't even know where yeah, they are. Yeah, Darkrai, Darkrai. Yeah, these are all Darkrai boxes here. So I'm gonna go to put this little deck box right up here. The lighting's not the best right now, so bear with me, guys. But it's gonna go right up there because I need some Darkrai smaller stuff to go on top here. And that's actually a perfect little 
peace. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, make sure you guys smack the like button, subscribe if you're new here. Let me know in the comment down below what was your favorite part about this video or what was your favorite item. And if you guys haven't already, if you could hit the like button, I would greatly appreciate it. And just comment anything, literally on every video ever. If you just comment like even like just an exclamation point, it helps the channel out. So if you want to support the rep pack, just leave a comment down below. It means the world to everything that we do here and to me. And if you guys want to support the show further, you can subscribe and also check out our Patreon. When you sign up for the Patreon, it's only $2 a month. And when you do that, you get extended versions of every video that we upload on any channel. Meaning that the video is extended by up to 2 to 10 to 20 minutes in some cases. And not just that, they're 100% ad free. And with different tiers, you can even get them early released as well. So go check that out at the top of the description. And if you want to see us live and also take part in a bunch of awesome giveaways, go check out our whatnot stream where when you sign up you get $15 for free but we also stream there every single Friday and many of the items that you saw in this video that I don't end up keeping or don't go up on the shop will go up on whatnot it's always tailored towards the type of stuff that we love collecting and talking about on this show I'm sure you're gonna love a lot of the stuff that we put up there plus we do giveaways and again you get 15 bucks for free to spend and I'm not the only one that streams on there there's a bunch of people so there's assuredly somebody out there that has something you're looking for and they have incredible deals on it too I pick up stuff for myself there all the time so I know you'll find something that link will be down below as well and I'll see you guys in this video right here that I know you're gonna love and as always rep pack I'll see you beautiful people in the next one thank you again for watching adios and bloop